بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد و علی آلہ و صحبہ وسلم اما بعد None of us knows in which state we will die. Not meaning the physical uh, location, but even that, that's as well. We don't know what state of Iman we're going to die in. A'udhu billah min kufr wa shirk. Because it's possible perhaps that a person worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now, and then they'll die on shirk. Or they'll die on weak Iman. Or they'll die on kufr that takes them out of the fold of Islam. That's entirely possible. So as Muslims, we always have to be steadfast in trying to better ourselves and come closer to Allah and renew our iman, feeding our souls. And this holy month of Ramadan, as we know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated it for taqwa so that we would fear Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reflect on the Quran. To double the Quran, it's when the Quran was, was, was revealed in the holy month of Ramadan. And it is a time for us to reflect on our status with our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And reflect and know that unlike some of those other individuals who say they're saved and believe that they're safe from the hellfire, the Muslim doesn't believe like that. The Muslim is always in between khawf wa raja, fearful of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and hopeful of his mercy, his rahmah, because we don't know in what state we're going to die. And we strive our best to be on righteousness. That's, that's how we have to live day to day. Day to day, we can't take it for granted. Oh, I prayed, I've been praying five times a day for 20 years straight. I think today, tomorrow I'll take a day off. Or I won't fast. I've been fasting so many times. I've had 10 Ramadans or whatever. I don't need to fast this Ramadan. Or I don't need to fast tomorrow. I fasted yesterday. No, the believer's not like that. And that is not from Iman, those kind of thoughts. That is actually from Kufr. And a matter of fact, to ha on, on cer certain acts, the person who stops praying, the Prophet ﷺ said, Man taraka salat fakad kafara. Whoever leaves the prayer has disbelieved. So that lets us know we have to be vigilant about our prayer and vigilant with all of our acts of ibadah. And the Prophet ﷺ said, alayhi salatu wasalam, in an authentic hadith, the hadith of Abdurrahman ibn Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, who said, قال, حدثنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو صادق المصدوق إن أهدكم يجمع خلقه في بطن أمه أربعين يوما نطفة ثم يكون علقة مثل ذلك ثم يكون مضغة مثل ذلك ثم يرسل إليه الملك 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 وينفخ فيه الروح ويؤمر بأربع كلمات بكتب رزقه وأجله وعمله والشقي أو سعيد فوالله فوالله الذي لا إله غيره إن أهلكم ليعملوا بأمل أهل الجنة حتى ما يكون بينه وبينها إلى ذراع فيسبق عليه الكتاب فيعمل بأمل أهل النار فيدخلها وإن أهدكم ليعملوا بأمل أهل النار حتى ما يكون بينه وبينها إلى ذراع فيسبق عليه الكتاب فيعمل بأمل أهل الجنة فيدخلها رواه بخاري ومسلم In this hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم which is a hadith عظيم It's a hadith عظيم If we only really reflect May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless, bless us to have soft hearts that reflects and practices his deen in a manner that he ple that pleases him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this hadith of Abi Abdurrahman Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said that 
the Messenger of Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said to him, and he is the Sadiq al Masduq, he is the truthful one who should be believed, alayhi salatu wa salam, who the, the most truthful ones, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, amongst mankind. Verily, one of you is combined in the stomach of his mother 40 days as nutfa, as, as a sperm, like, you know, mixed sperm. The mixed fluid between the male and the female. Then he is like a, a blood clot. Mithlithalic, forty uh, similar to that. And then, like a morsel of flesh, similar to that, another 40 days. Meaning 120 days. Then an angel is sent to him to blow in his soul. And he is commanded with four things. To write his risk, you know, what, how, how much his earnings whether they're lawful or unlawful, how much. And his lifespan, his or her lifespan. And the deeds that they will do. And whether they're happy or sad. And by Allah, the one whose soul the one whose hand my soul is in. Or by, by Allah, the one who there is none worthy of worship except him. Verily, one of you will do the deeds of the people of Jannah, of paradise, until what was written for him will overtake him and he will do the deeds of the hellfire and he will enter it. And verily one of you will do the deeds of the people of the hellfire until what was written for him overtakes him and he will do the deeds of the people of paradise and enter it. And this was narrated in Bukhari and Muslim. In this hadith, it should bring about fear for the believer. Because we don't know how we're going to end. We don't know in which state we'll be taken, our souls will be taken. Will we be in a state of Iman? What was written for us? So that is a stern warning for the believer to constantly reflect on the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his ayat, reading, and striving to increase your iman by remembering Allah much and doing those acts of obedience that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and avoiding the muharramat Illustrating for us taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal. Striving to gain taqwa. Striving to remove yourself from sin. Because you don't want to be in an act of in the in doing an act of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the middle of that act, that be your time. That you your life be taken. I reflect on the time when the tsunami in Indonesia, for example, that disaster. But you can imagine, because so, so many people go there for, there are many people who go there, especially to Bali and those places, for uh, sex tourism, ikramakumullah, and things like this. So you can imagine when that struck, how many people also died, their last action was an act of foulness. 
they thought they were in a type of paradise because they were enjoying their nefs, they were enjoying their desires to the fullest extent, and then they died like that. And they'll be resurrected before their Lord with that having been their last deed, how they, how they, they ended their life. Wa'iyadhan billah. And how many people in so many other situations similar to that died in natural disasters or what have you and they were doing wrongdoing. May Allah protect us from that. So that's why Ahli Iman is, strives, uh, is striving and should continue to strive to increase the Iman. Don't be satisfied. Don't ever become arrogant and think you're better than anyone else. Think that you're from Ahl Sunnah. No one else is from Ahl Sunnah. Wa'iyadhan billah. You're from Ahl Iman. No one else is from Ahl Iman. Wa'iyadhan billah. Because Allah may allow for you to be misguided and leave Ahl Iman altogether. Or leave Ahl Sunnah and be a mubtadi'ah. That's, that's in the hands of Allah. So you do not want to end up in that state. That's why we always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for ikhlas with the bat. And this brings up another issue, which I've witnessed myself amongst students that we have, students of knowledge, those people seeking knowledge, trying to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a great act of ibadah. That you have to be careful of arrogance, and how you treat one another. Because we've seen some brothers, when fitna comes, they don't know how to handle it because they weren't firm on the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A lot of it was talk. And then they become disenchanted because they had a distorted perception of something. And I'll give a specific example. One particular scholar who was known amongst many of the people for being on the son of the Messenger of Allah, for being a very harsh individual, this particular scholar. And he was not even on that level of knowledge, but the people built him up to such a high level as if he was, and they called him Alam and such and such. But he wasn't even known for giving durus, giving beneficial knowledge. He, he gave things in his, he spent most of his time having gatherings in his home and the people would come and he would talk about individuals. This one's off it, this one's off it, that one's off it. That's what he busied the people with. Subhanallah. So many of the people held this individual up into high esteem. They thought he was a great alama. People who didn't even know the Arabic language, some of them. And they held this alama up in high esteem. Alama so and so says this and this. Brothers began to translate his statements and cause fitna around the world. Not just in a particular locality, but around the world. Then when this individual became known, uh, an alam that was of much greater status and standard than he was in knowledge and fiqh and practice, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best as far as practice, but uh, refuted him. And then another alim from Ahl Sunnah, great Jebel, refuted him as well. And then it became clear that this individual is calling people to misguidance. That he, in fact, is accusing everyone of misguidance, and in fact, he is misguided. And the people fell. Many of the people who followed him blindly, whatever this man said, whoever's reputation he ruined, they followed in that verdict. They ran with it. He said so-and-so's off it, I will not give so-and-so salam. He said so-and-so is off it. I will not give him salams. He said so-and-so is off it. I will not give her salams. I'll stay away from them. That masjid is off it. That whole country. In fact, it was related to me by a brother who was an authentic report who said that even he said, matter of fact, it was translated even on the internet, that he said that nobody from such and such a whole continent, he mentioned, was, was, was on the sunnah. How can you say this? The shahid, the per point of mentioning this is that Ahl Sunnah adheres to the principles of Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam no matter where it comes from. And we don't blind follow and ta'asa because you don't want to go down with someone else. 
And when the fitna comes, you want to stay firm on the son of the messenger of Allah and on those principles, not firm upon, even if it was your own sheikh, what he said, no matter how beloved he is to you. Because if it goes against the haq, you have to leave it. You have to leave what he said and go for the haq. But unfortunately, the people didn't do this. And so you saw some people, even we heard of people leaving the religion. We heard of individuals in such and such country jumping out of windows. I mean, what kind of teenage idol stuff is this? This is no place in Islam. But it goes to show you how misguidance can come and how the people can become distorted and how the people, when they don't follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and have that thabat ala sunnah, and that practice for the sake of Allah, that they're doing whatever they're doing strictly for the sake of Allah, not for anything else, then they can become misguided and they can end with a wicked ending. And that's what happened. Some of the individuals even left Islam. Some of the individuals, I know particular individuals who were very extreme before, they, and then they left that. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Well, anything I said correct was from Allah. Anything I said incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم